Well, hello, everybody. This is Ibadi NX from The Candid Frame, and we're going to do something a little different. I thought that with everyone at home now, uh, it might be a little easier to get some people on board to do something in tandem with me in terms of these critiques. So I asked my friend Sam Lynch Harl from Germany, who has his own popular YouTube channel on street photography, uh, to join me in discussing some of the images that we pull from the, the Flickr poll. Uh, so before we jump into the images and have a discussion, welcome, Sam, to the Candid Frame YouTube channel. It's good to have you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was fun having you on my channel, so I'm glad to give back the favor. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been a fan of the work that you've been doing on your channel. Uh, your critique sessions have always been fun um, that you've done with Jason and some of the other, other people uh, that, you, mm. that you share the mic with. And there you go in really deep, deep, deep. With a lot of images more than yeah I, we do it yeah we do it live and things go wrong all the time so oh no that's that's a tightrope i'm, I'm, not I'm really. glad yeah i'm glad we're doing this uh we're recording this <laughs> yeah for no, those of you who, who are not familiar with his youtube channel you should definitely check it out he has a diversity of stuff right now up there and uh, not just the critiques, but he's been doing profiles on several street photographers, some of whom use the Rico GR. What is it? What is it now? Four. GR three is the GR three new model. Okay. Yeah. So th those Doesn't profiles are really great, even if you don't use the uh, the Rico uh, uh, cameras. I think he does a really great job of them. And uh, you, thank you. And you get to see people at work rather than just talking about the camera and showing a few bad shots on their YouTube channel as if they know the camera at that point. So kudos to the quality of your content there. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, your podcast and everything you do as well. So huge yeah. honor to be here. Cool. So what we're going to do is uh, usually each week I pull three images from the Flickr poll and then I have a particular theme and idea that I want to discuss. And I'm going to have it a little more general this time. I, I picked four images largely because I thought they were just interesting photographs. One of the things that I, I'm looking for um, when I'm looking at uh, images for the Flickr poll are people who are really um, doing interesting things in terms of the way they're seeing a scene, not so much what they're doing with the camera or post-processing. And usually that involves what they're seeing beyond their actual subject. Uh, because a, a good photograph is made up of not just having an interesting subject, but all the elements, other elements that you choose to include in the frame to complement or to contrast or to frame your subject within the scene. If you're oblivious to that when you're making the photograph, the only time you really see it is when you pull up the image on your computer, and by that time it's too late if some of those things ruin the photograph. So I, I've chosen four images that I think would allow uh, both Sam and I to have a really interesting conversation about that, that concept. So I'm going to share my screen now, and then we'll start, start talking pictures. But um, here we have a shot by Byron Seagraves. We don't have any uh, XF data on this. Uh, this is a scene that was shot well before the pandemic uh, happened because we, we see these kids at, at a beach where uh, I guess one or maybe more kids, uh, I think it looks like one girl is being buried in the sand um, by her friends or family members. We have a kid uh, standing up, um, doing something with his arm. We have an adult in the background. And then we have some sort of structure in the back and then a mountain range. This looks to me as if it's Southern California. And it looks like it could have been shot on film 20 years ago. Um, I don't, I, it, it's not just the color treatment, but it's just sort of the hairstyles. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, but before I, I usually talk about the images first, I really love to hear what you, what you think about it, Sam, in terms of what I was talking about in terms of the different elements, the, the photographer here chose to include in the frame. Yeah, I, I definitely like this, uh, image. Um, it's not, there's not an obvious subject. Uh, I mean, the, the kids are the subject, but there are so many things happening that uh, our eyes wander around the frame, which I think uh, makes me interested in the, in the photograph. And I agree, it definitely has a very classic feel. Uh, it looks 
also timeless. There's no, we don't know the location or when this was shot. And um, it lets us focus on the, on, the, on the kids, on the people here in the frame. And uh, so far I'm trying to discover new details, um, but it looks interesting and trying to figure out what's happening here and what maybe the photographer was uh, thinking before taking this photograph. Yeah, I think in terms of framing, it's really kind of interesting because you have this girl who is, uh, whose body is buried in the sand, but she's framed by these two here. So there's this kind of a sub-framing, like there's this triangle from this person and this person here, and then she's like right smack in the middle. You also have this shadow that's leading up to her. And then you have another triangle here with these three figures. And they just, there's a... Um, there's a nice compliment in terms of the implied shapes that it works well for me um, in the shot. Um, the, the guy in the background, he's a little problematic, partly mm -hmm. because one, his back is to us, two, he's not doing anything particularly interesting, and I think he's just a little bit too bright for the shot. Um, mm -hmm. the, the heart of the image is really here, but because that shirt is a little brighter than I would like, um, too much attention is being pulled up here. And I can say the same about this structure in the background. I wouldn't necessarily Photoshop it out, but considering that this is a black and white image, I think that burning it, um, mm -hmm. burning this area here and here, and then uh, dodging this area here to make this brighter, especially this girl's face, and possibly uh, applying some sort of, some sort of, uh, some sort of vignette would help emphasize this part of the um, part of the photograph. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I agree. The for me the it's not a problem, but it, if you do some dodge and burn here, it can probably help. Um, there's very strong and harsh sunlight here, and this usually creates very harsh shadows, uh, which I'm not always a fan of. Sometimes you get shadows you don't want. In this case, um, the shadow. Um, in front of this uh, girl's face is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't mind it, but looking at the faces, you can't really see the eyes, um, the expressions kind of hidden by the shadows. I mean, just in terms of post-processing, if this was shot on film, you could do some such and burning maybe, but we can do this uh, on digital files as well. I would probably highlight the faces a little bit more if, mm -hmm. if that was would be possible. I also really like that only one uh, of these kids is looking at us. Uh, every everyone is, you know, in their own heads uh, playing. Or I like how the boy um, who's standing is looking away from from the other kids, so he's spotting something else. Uh, but there's still this one girl noticing us, and there's so much going on. I would probably, as you say, um, try to eliminate the distractions. Although we can't say for sure how, what color the background um, was, or this um, this looks like a roof or something behind this guy. Mm, yeah. Um, maybe if you change the color channels, um, you could eliminate this a little bit. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's hard to say how you could take this in a different way. You could probably hide um, this guy by um blocking it with some of the children's uh head but then maybe the position would be off uh it's, it's very difficult but i would say with some post-processing you could probably eliminate some of the distractions yeah yeah it's it's hmm. it's really hard because you have so many players in this scene yeah and that's one of the difficulties when you're faced with having multiple figures it's really kind of easy when you have just one 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 person in the frame because mm -hmm. all you're doing is is shifting your position relative to them in the background. But when you've yeah. got as many characters as you do here, even making a, a, a shift to the right to obscure him would likely block the girl whose head is buried in the sand and just sort of ruin the shot. Um, yes, yeah. So sometimes you just got to do the best that you, you can. Um, a minor quibble is the fact that uh, the girl on the far left and the girl on the far right their hands are getting caught off at the at the wrist. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't ruin the shot for me. I know some people would just say, oh, you shouldn't, you know. And for me, yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes it happens, but I think that the overall shot is strong enough 
that um, it doesn't ruin it for me, but I think it's something that the, any photographer should be aware of. Because I know when, you, when things are this busy and things are changing so fast, that's an easy thing to miss. Yes, yeah. Uh, one thing you could do here is maybe uh, take a photograph from a higher angle and get more of the of the sand and get some more um, uh, empty space um, between the mountains and uh, the kids. Uh, but I can only um, theorize how that would look like. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, it gone up. Um, mm -hmm. I think you would have maybe lost how pronounced her face is. Yeah. You may have been able to go down, but at that point, her head might get juxtaposed with him. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's, but that's thing. Those are things that you really have to be conscious of as you're making those those changes, because any choice that you make is going to be a compromise. Yeah, and so sometimes you just got to go. What's um, What's the choice that'll do the least damage to the, to the potential of the scene? Hmm. And he could have um, opted out for the easy choice just to take a photograph of the girl in, um, in, in the sand and just ignore the rest. But yeah, yeah, he took the uh, conscious decision to include the other children as well in the background. And I always like to see the environment a little bit. Sometimes we have close up of things uh, close ups of things and we don't necessarily know the context of it mm -hmm. and here it's this the story is very clear but the, it's so complex that it's becoming very hard to create a very clean uh, composition but i'm uh, glad that they yeah. they went for it though you know yeah, it's yeah. not perfect but it's so much better than just what you said just isolating the girl's face and just focusing on that area of the frame that would have just been a really clean read, not particularly interesting. And then you would have moved on to another image. So, you know, yeah. walking this kind of type rope, I think is always well worth, well worth doing, even if it doesn't turn out a hundred percent perfect. Mm. Okay. And when the scene like this comes up, I would just shoot more photos and oh yeah, stay as long as you can in the scene without, of course, uh, you know, go overboard, but, um, Yeah, I would just stay in the scene and try to get the most out of it. Yeah, until until the scene plays out, until something changes yeah. and you know that you can move on to something else. Yeah. Okay, here we have a shot by Eric Florin. No XF data here. Um, this is just a, just an interesting gesture of this kid pulling who I, a man who I assume is his dad towards uh, a display, uh, like a toy store or a department store. Um, I thought that the strength of this image was just the body language and the gesture. Um, the, the, the lines and the shapes created by this boy as he sort of pulls on his dad, who seems a little bit reluctant to follow him, um, mm -hmm. I yeah. thought was just, uh, just a fun moment, especially on the street. Um, there's so often when I look at the uh, street photography, there's not a lot happening. It's just people walking down the street. There's not much animation or expression or uh, anything that conveys the relationship between people. So I'm always looking for scenes and moments where you get uh, an indication of a relationship. And I think that this one does it here. And just the determination on this kid's face. I mean, he is like, he is yeah. so laser focused on whatever is on display on that window. I don't know if it's a video game or what, but he wants his dad. <laughs> Watch his dad yeah. to see it, and uh, the dad has no choice. <laughs> yeah, he has no choice. And I think for that, the image overall doesn't completely work for me. Um, partly because mm -hmm. of of the lighting, and partly just because we don't have a context. We have a little bit of a context of what's happening here, but not enough in terms of what may be directing their attention. But. I still yeah. think that it's just in terms of gesture and body language and, and relationship that it is a really strong moment. Yeah, I mean, just getting uh, gestures um, at the right time is super hard and just in, even just anticipating them is very hard. And uh, I find that most street photographs um, that we get on our critique show, for example, just lack this specific 
moment and this gesture that just could make the photo much more interesting. And I love this. This is, you know, very, uh, I mean, I love this scene, but I would also would like to see more of the context, what, what he's looking at. Um, maybe the photographer could have walked a few steps with them to the uh, entrance or followed them maybe a little bit, not, you know, told, not being a creep, obviously, but yeah. uh, just following them and see what's going on. Um, but when things like this happen, all you can do is just act. And if your camera's not even on, then you will probably miss this anyways. So kudos for the photographer to, 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 um, to capture this. But uh, next step would be to um, see what else you can include in the frame that makes this, um, yeah, which, which makes this uh, uh, work a little bit more um, besides just the gesture. Um, because I see a lot of potential here. I would love to see what's on the right of the frame, yeah. uh, out of the frame. And if the camera had been shifted to the right to include more of the display, and you even cut off the father except for his arm, you would still mm. get a part of that story, right? The kid yeah. pulling somebody towards that, that window. So you don't even need the entire dad's face, just him, his arm being pulled by the boy tells the same story, but you would include a lot more of the, the, the window and then you would make that connection. But like you said, mm -hmm. um, this probably happened at a split second and the photographer was probably just reacting to, to the moment. Um, so he probably didn't have the wherewithal to really sort of process um, the entire scene. But I think that's one of the things that you have to do as a, as a photographer is that you constantly have to be aware not only of your potential subjects but where you are in the space right you have to be yeah. thinking not just oh there's an interesting subject it's like okay what's around them so that you can go oh there's this other stuff that i'm already aware of that i know will complement the scene and will allow you to make that choice if you're just reacting to the the, the gesture alone or the character mm -hmm. alone in that moment you won't have that information to consider when you're making the photograph. So you'll just make, you'll make a composition that's just based on the obvious thing that you're seeing. And I think that that's the, the, the greater mistake that's made in a lot of uh, street photography that I see is that people are waiting for something to happen. And when it happens, by that time, they do not have um, mm. the bandwidth to really think about, oh, what's the background like? What's the lighting like? Should I go horizontal? Should I go vertical? Should I put back? You know, if you're waiting for something to just spontaneously happen in front of you, you're really reliant on your own reflexes to make to make that shot happen. And Jesus, I've been shooting forever. And being able to do that is is not easy. It's rare that I'm able to pull off a shot based on, you know, those quick reflexes and, and instincts. More often than not, it's just because of my level of awareness. Uh, that allows me to put all the pieces together. Yeah, and also helps when that you imagine a scene playing out and the possibilities in your head all the time if you see a scene like this. So even without a camera, you can, if you notice an interesting scene unfolding, try to see how you would photograph it in a way that makes this, um, just look at what your best option would be or what how you can tell uh, more than just what you're seeing. And... I think this is a good exercise. Just um, if you go, when you go out without the camera, you can even practice that. Uh, and then just having having a scene already in mind. If you go, this looks like a very um, typical shopping uh, area, like a, we have this in Hamburg here too, like a big street, all the big uh, department stores. And if you already know where you are, you can think about um, stories that you could tell here and then if you then if then something like this happen uh, happens you might already have uh, a theme that you can attach to it or play with it so i think it's important to also know where you are photographing um it makes you probably see things more clearly once a moment like this happens yeah you use the the gr3 which has a 28 millimeter how do you find that that helps you yeah. in terms of of this thing that we're talking about in terms of context relative to the subject. Yeah, it's it's great for that. I mean, it's 
it is the perfect i mean for me it's the perfect focal length because it's uh, this looks here this frame looks like it could have been a 20 yeah, but it looks a little bit tighter but i can imagine that i would be able to see more of the window on the right and um for me it's just so much fun um exploring the frame and seeing what i can include and exclude because with 28 uh you have so much more in the frame and oftentimes you don't want things in your frame um that uh take away the um uh, the attention of the viewer so most of the time i'm um spending my time you know excluding things out of the frame um because the things i want in the frame are are easy to get in the frame mm -hmm. with 28 but then it becomes very hard not to have distractions in the frame so um it's good for that <laughs> for this kind of uh, stuff but at the same time it's also very difficult it takes a lot of practice one of the things here i think is that this might work better as a black and white um mm. because the area immediately behind the boy and the arm is so much brighter that it sort of draws us towards the background and i don't think that the color is really essential to this shot so i think by converting it uh, over to black and white and doing some generous dodging and burning you can emphasize the boy and the gesture a little bit more uh to make what we have here just a little bit stronger yeah and the the, the father probably made a different expression a few frames after that so trying to get the expression or the reaction of the father here to his son's um uh yeah to his son pulling him towards the store would be also interesting to see now yeah. it's kind of lifeless a little bit uh maybe he's used to it <laughs> and, and and this is a story that's going to play out because he's getting his dad to go over yeah and there's just going to be this dynamic between him and his dad as he's communicating the importance of what's ever behind the window and his dad either acquiescing or saying no we got to go and the son yeah. being disappointed and you know there's this whole narrative because i'm i've been that boy right you know, grabbing my mom. Oh, this, I want this. I want this. And then, and then nope. And you and doing the whole negotiation. I mean, that's just yeah. that's just life. And I think that if you're seeing mm -hmm. that play out, uh, you have to photograph it. I mean, I would have to photograph it. But part of it is getting past the fear of encroaching on a, a moment between people. Yeah. And it's like sometimes you just gotta, you know, just because you know how good it can be and how rare it is, you just gotta make the photographs. You know, and kind of deal with the consequences later, and which usually is nothing because most people don't care. Um, mm. With the camera that you have, you could probably be a little more, a little less obtrusive, you know. But yeah, it, yeah. And then with a big DSLR, but when a moment's playing out like this, you just got to stick with it. Yeah, I mean, they are not focusing really on you in this moment. They are, mm -hmm. you know, they have enough to do with themselves and, uh, in this case, it, it's not that difficult to be close to them and without them noticing you taking photos. And even if they do, you can joke around and say, you know, what are you looking at? Uh, what do you want? And uh, is your father not, you know, getting you the, the the toys you want? And you know, just make have fun with this. Yeah. All right. Here we have a shot by uh, Sadul Islam. Oh. This was made with a Nikon uh, D5200 at 1 500th of a second, F16 ISO 400. 400? Yeah, ISO 400. So what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I mean, I, I'm liking it. It looks, I mean, visually it's very beautiful. <laughs> I like the colors, the silhouette. Um, I have to say though, I'm. I like the silhouette, but I, I feel like there's more potential in terms of just the silhouette. Um, it looks a little bit static, so I, I, I I'm not sure. I would probably love to see what happened before, after that, with the hands especially. Yeah, I like the body language mm. and the lines of mm. this, like this curve that's created by the, the lines that's really what kind of brought my attention to this particular one uh, there are a lot of silhouettes uh, that's pretty typical for street photography uh, 
sometimes it's just not a particular interesting shape because when you're looking at a silhouette, it's really about the the shape independent of the the person that's actually casting it because uh, you have to think about it in in that terms of an abstract. So that for me is sort of interesting. Um, what was what made me pick this shot was the inclusion of this corner up here. Oh, I didn't we have this figure it. here on the left hand <laughs> side. Hmm. And that for me was kind of interesting. It doesn't completely work because I don't think that this this guy here adds an interesting element. There was a potential for that as a means yeah. of maybe complementing what was happening here. But it, does, it doesn't pay off there. Because for me, if it had just been just this wall of what looks like it may be a boat or something, mm -hmm. um, and that silhouette, it would have been, oh, okay, it's nice, nice color, nice silhouette. But it was the choice to include this corner of the frame. And I, I think to, the way I'm thinking is that the photographer was aware that they were including this. Because the blue is a really nice complement to all these warm colors. Yes. So it creates yeah. this nice contrast between warm and cool. Um, but I, I would just have loved to have something a little more dynamic happening here uh, on the left-hand side of the frame. And that's what I'm um, suggesting with all the photographs that we're choosing. It's like, yeah, you have something that is really drawing your attention. That's a big magnet for you visually. You immediately want to photograph, but it's like, what else is there? And for me, it's often stuff mm. that's lingering on the very edges of the frame that you're often oblivious to until it's too late if you're not looking carefully. And, yeah. you know, for me, even though that area of blue is really, really small, I think it's an essential part of the photograph, but the moment in that little corner is, is not equal to the moment that's playing off here. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a very nice contrast, the blue and, and the, the warm colors. Um, yeah. Maybe if you go a few steps back and include more of the environment could also not hurt. Like, I, would, I think that the silhouette and the colors are such a strong visual, um, uh, um, uh, it's a very visual area in this frame, having a little bit more of, of the boat and maybe there are more people on top that look down maybe, or maybe there's potential for another uh, silhouette on the left. I can't really tell because I don't know yeah. how this place looks like, but it looks like a um, place I would, definitely enjoy taking pictures of and then um do you also think that because we use uh, i mean you also use instagram i i know that yeah. you also use instagram i feel like the more we use uh, our mobile devices to look at photographs we tend to take photos for mobile um viewing right so we have very small frames yeah, that's very true yeah yeah and I find this with my GR. I, I mean, I love it. It's a great camera and I, I can make huge prints if I want to, but seeing all the details in, in the frame is very difficult when you have a small screen. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> when that is a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. I so think, I think this scene is, you know, works, would, would work perfectly on Instagram, but printing it out, I think we want to see a little bit more maybe. Right. And that's a really, a, yeah. uh, really, a, a really observant observation. Observant observation. That's really redundant. <laughs> but no, yeah, because if you're doing it for Instagram, this would read quickly enough that people really like it. I can imagine this would get a lot of likes because of the shadow and the color contrast. Most people would probably completely be oblivious to what's happening in the left-hand corner. I know, yeah. I know what I'm looking for in photographs. So even when I'm doing looking at Instagram, I'm looking that carefully, even on my on my phone. Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to get in my own photographs. Um, but I think that this scene is likely a scene where I would have stayed a while, right? Because my hope would be that this guy would either stay in position or he kept returning to this position, whatever he was doing, and that the mm -hmm. dynamism here would change, right? So the stage is basically set here and you have your camera in that position holding on to that composition and then you're just going back and forth observing what's happening in, with the interplay between these two right and you just keep shooting until you know one of them leaves and then it sort of plays out um for me like this is like 95 percent there right 
And yeah. just I just need an interesting gesture in the upper left-hand corner and something dynamic happening uh, in the lower right, and it'll be golden. But you, ha you have to be willing to not just shoot blindly and just shoot 300 pictures. It's to be mm. patient and to be aware of what's happening. And then as you see it playing out, shooting, shooting, right? Mm. And, you know, and sometimes it's a wash, but for me, it's a good, it's good practice to do it anyway, because I resist the temptation to leave early, which will sometimes frustrate me because there've been too many times where I've said, ah, oh, I'll walk away and then it plays out. And then I get pissed yeah, off yeah. at myself because I <laughs> gave up prematurely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And here's the last shot. This is by Patrick uh, Stanitz. Uh, this was created with a Fujifilm X-Pro2, one five hundredth of a second, F11, 200, uh, ISO 250. Uh, this was a sort of an interesting image because uh, you see all these people together behind this this fence i'm not sure exactly what they're what they're watching just then mm. uh, no it just says it's london um we don't know exactly what's happening here there may be just people hanging out on their on their porch but uh, this image spoke to relationship for me um they seem they seem they, they seem to know each other uh, there seems to be some sort of connection. I don't know if it's familial, whether it's just friends, but they're just hanging out. And I thought that just the just like with the first shot with the kids on the beach, I like seeing the connection, especially between the two people on, beneath the umbrella, and then the yeah. one woman leaning with her uh, with her elbow to the fence. There's another person that's right behind the woman who's standing, and the only thing we can see are her her feet. And there's another woman, actually, I just, I just caught that, who's coming down the steps. You just see her hand right below this area of white, just noticing that. So for me, the appeal of the shot is just the interplay of the people there. Um, she's dominant in the frame just because her, she's, she carries more visual weight. But as I look at these people here, I just seem to negotiate the frame and give good consideration to everyone. Um, and they they play off of each other. In in a lot of shots made on the street, we'll have a, a subject that's obviously the subject of uh, the photographer's interest, and then we'll have these other people in the frame that are just a distraction. And here, I don't I don't get that at all. Yeah, I don't know what I can add to that because I totally agree. It's for me, it's also about the relationship between these. Um people in the frame uh, it looks like it could be the mother of uh, the oldest person is sitting probably mm -hmm. uh, i'm only assuming i can't really see it but it looks like a very intimate moment between them they're probably family um it's also very interesting to see the person coming into the frame i haven't i didn't even notice that in the beginning i like that we see the hands i'm just wondering if if we need to see this person a little bit more. Um, other than that, I also like that we don't really know what, what's going on on the right side. Mm -hmm. And seeing this fence, I mean, for me, it reminds me of um, refugee camps here. In, in Germany, we have, uh, even in my neighborhood, there's a refugee camp. They have very simple... Um, uh, um, apartments and uh, it's, there's always a fence around it and it feels a little bit strange okay. because we all live here together but they are kind of separated and uh, it feels like they're behind a cage um, so this gives me the same vibe but they don't look like uh, refugees but it makes me also think about the fence why is the fence there and I really love this little detail here in the middle um, it looks like someone tried to open um, the fence or with some force. Or yeah, mm -hmm. you see this? There's some the, the fence is bending a little bit. Maybe someone on the other side tried to gave them gave them some uh, give them something. Uh, so I can make up my own story, which uh, I like. I don't want everything to be told as well. I like to have um, 
to, to yeah, give my own interpretation. Yeah, I think the gate. I need to me, think a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I think the gate was more like security to keep people out. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, because um, it looks like this. Because in the left, there's like a, a a garage, so I suspect that this is mm. like sort of a complex. So this was probably something that was put up in order to prevent like foot traffic. So because I'm 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 assuming that you know this is an area where they want to sort of control the flow of traffic going in and out so this kind of fence has been put up there because that obviously is the the front porch leading into the apartment so it would be an odd thing to, yeah. to have that have that there otherwise um wh what are your yeah. thoughts on the the color we talked earlier about an image that we thought we would work mm. better as a black and white what are your thoughts about color in this does it does it add to the shot does it become a distraction I mean, they are very vibrant, and for for my taste, a little bit too vibrant. I don't, I don't think it doesn't work well in color. It's not that distracting, but I can also see it working very well in black and white. It might, I think, it might actually work a little bit better in black and white. Although I li I like the warm tones. Mm -hmm. um, I have to see it to <laughs> to yeah. make an opinion about I've that. Yeah, I think either would wait, would work, but it would be a very different mm. shot. I think yeah. the reason it works for me in color is that because there's this repetition of red. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, the red shirt of the man and the red of his hat, the blouse of the woman, her earrings, her fingernails are painted red, and then the no parking yeah. lettering. And that all tells a story as well. Yeah, so it has because. the connection there. If you convert it over to black and white, um, she's going to be much more dominant, right? Yeah. Because that white hat against her skin is going to be much more pronounced, but you're also going to be dealing with this being much brighter. Mm. So you're going to yeah. have to like burn this down because at that point, um, that red and that yellow and that blue, they're going to kind of be sort of the same tones overall. So they're going to be of less importance as, as she is. So you got to figure out, okay, why is what's the point of interest in the shot? If it's all about her for the photographer, then converting it over black and white and doing some dodging and burning would, would make that happen. But if it's more about the interplay between all of them uh, together and the scene itself, I think the color works in this case. But I think yeah. you have to be aware of that when you're making the photograph because mm. you know color can be a huge distraction if it's on a, uh, if it's on a, on a, a element in the background that doesn't add to the shot. Yeah. So yeah, like the garage would be a distraction in black and white because it would be the brightest spot. All that, yeah, all that white. Uh, it's just like, oh my uh, God. Because <laughs> there's only so you much you can do with that before you, you call attention yeah. to the fact that you're burning it too much. Yeah, it's very interesting. If you shoot black and white for a while, you, you start to notice uh, distractions um, that usually just occur when you shoot black and white. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Anyone? I also like, I have to say, I like the silhouette on the right. I didn't notice that first. Oh, here, um, yeah, the shadow. Yeah, because th yeah. that suggests that there are people on the other side, uh, very close to them, actually. And I like the Pepsi bottle here, just because of the color yeah. complement to everything else. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If anything, I would have liked her to been just come down a little more so we could get more of her mm. shadow on her hand, like here and maybe obstructed this. I don't think I wanted, yeah. I would want her completely in the frame because I think she would have been too much of a distraction had she come into the light and you could have seen her face. I don't know. I really would have to have seen it. But I suspect that um, if I had seen this, these people would have been fixed and the only dynamic thing that was changing was this woman coming down the steps. So at that point, you're just like, you keep your frame and you keep shooting as she's coming down. And then later on, when you have those images to compare, you can figure out where exactly on her path down the steps does it work best, right? Mm. But again, you have to, you know, you have to get over that that fear of just making one shot and then moving, right? Because you don't want people yeah. to get angry at you. It's like, well, what if you if you've committed to one shot, you should commit to thirty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> until until you you know you have the moment. Because if you make that one shot and it's not the moment, it's like, well, you haven't done anything. Oh. 
I mean, they can't do anything to you anyways. <laughs> They're behind the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, all they can do is scream at you. <laughs> good, good point. Good point. I mean, oh. yeah, I, I think it's a very interesting scene. I, and I think it's captured nicely. I, I, I'm trying to find out how I would photograph it. Probably the same angle and maybe try to go a few steps towards... Um, the lady on the right and see if I can be more directional, but maybe the left side would be distracting. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know. there's a lot of interesting stuff happening here and you know, all of these images, um, you know, you can see how they're all interesting largely, you know, because of their complexity to some degree, Yeah. You know, how they're all introducing some, some different element. Um, other than, you know, other than the subject it, uh, itself. And that's for me is like where the, where the real challenge is. Cause if you got, if, if you're out on the street and I know we haven't been out on the street for a while, but whenever we get back, um, if you feel like you've gotten pretty good at getting that single subject and you're producing pretty repeatable results, you got to shake things up. And the only way I know of shaking things up is by doing something different, either including more elements in the frame, um, going wider and getting physically closer, um, shaking things up so that you're not comfortable anymore. Because if, you're, if you get comfortable and you're satisfied with the results and you're not feeling any anxiety, then something's wrong. You know, I know you know that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have anxiety. <laughs> I'm I'm not always confident on the street, and that's good. I don't want to be overly confident. Okay. I think it's the fun of street photography is to, you know, have this, have the butterflies in your stomach before you take a photograph, and then if you get it, it's you know best feeling ever, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for joining me, man. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. That this was definitely fun and uh, a good change. Um, of my other, you know, hour, hour long, two hour long <laughs> live streams I do. So that was really refreshing. Yeah. So uh, tell people where they can find you and, um, and, you know, all your social and YouTube, yeah. and all that stuff. Um, I mean, best place would be you can find me on my uh, website, lintaro.de uh, for Germany. And then Instagram is uh, lin.taro and my YouTube channel. Samuel uh, Street Life. All right. And you guys can find me at thecanderframe.com where I feature conversations with photographers from all over the world. Uh, and you can check out, uh, though you can stream it here on YouTube, um, you can use whatever podcast app you enjoy and uh, listen to it there. We also have our own podcast app. And if you like what you saw here in terms of me doing critiques with someone else, let me know. Just write something down in the notes. And uh, let me know whether I should keep doing this because I know I like talking with someone else other than me looking into a camera alone. Um, so give me a, uh, a couple of words on this, right? All right, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.